Um, you will uh, soon uh, understand from my thick accent and also from the way that I use my hands <laughs> that, I'm, uh, that I'm from Italy. But I'm starting uh, this uh, presentation with painting by a French uh, artist, uh, and also I will quote uh, a French poet. But I want you to be clear on this. I don't like French food, <laughs> so no misunderstanding there. Um, this is a painting by Monet of the harbor of Honfleur, and uh, Baudelaire used to do is, uh, is walking there, and he was looking at the ship, and he wrote back, in, and he wrote in one of his writings about uh, how those uh, idle sheep uh, at bay Aren't they calling to us and asking, when are we going to sail for our dreams? And, uh, and I think that it touches on a very important point of traveling. The power or the promises that traveling can be a way to act our dream, to, to become our dream. And um, this is uh, in, indeed uh, very powerful to me, and I do think uh, and I do travel as a way of uh, uh, start a spiritual process. A spiritual process that through traveling you're able to do mainly two things. The first one is an inward journey and to try to understand you better. And that at the end of the day, probably in the end of the process, it means uh, to try to understand that uh, it's not uh, uh, the things or the stuff in our life that trouble us, but it's more the judgment that we make on those things and on those stuff that are the ones that trouble us. And the second one is uh, in becoming closer to nature, is to enter nature and understanding how we are part or, or on a common whole. And um, so this is the promise of traveling, but I think that nowadays in the postmodern world, traveling is becoming complicated. And it, raises, it was easier, let's say 60 years ago, when those explorers used to set off to discover new lands. But now, in the postmodern world, in the world of uh, questioning, so the meaning of why we, each of us, travel is becoming a key question. Why do you travel? Why not to stay put? There is nothing anymore left to be discovered. But the, the problem is not just philosophically, and it's not just about meaning. This problem is practical. And uh, I took a flight three weeks uh, ago, for example, and I went to the tropical paradise Boracay. Again, so just the names, a lot of anticipation to live my dreams. And instead, uh, um, what you found, uh, a place that is super crowded and is uh, very loud and everything in there is, is indeed a beautiful place, but everything that has been developed and that is built on the infrastructure to accommodating the guest, the services like restaurants and bar, they are done in a way that compromise this spiritual process that I was uh, telling you about before. And there is a fantastic quote from, uh, in, in a movie from the uh, founder of, uh, of the North Face uh, who says, if you compromise, it was talking about going up Mount, uh, Mount Everest, uh, and it was talking about these holidays uh, that now everyone can get to Mount Everest and probably have uh, a little mint chocolate placed uh, on their sleeping bag uh, <laughs> before, before going to sleep. And what they say, if you uh, compromise this process for doing things like this, so you, you start, you leave home as an asshole and you come back as an asshole. <laughs> so, the, and uh, the infrastructure that are there, but also the people behavior. And I was joking, I like to, I like to run, so I was joking back and forth in this uh, beautiful three kilometer white sand beach. And the behavior of people were amazing. Everybody was taking photos. And they were taking photos uh, like this one. And uh, this is already funny in itself, but if you think that 50 meter ahead, there's another couple taking the same pictures, and another 50, me 50 meters ahead, there are two friends, and one is laying half naked uh, like this in the, in, 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 into, the, into the water. You start asking yourself, what is going on here? And actually, I'm, one of my activities, I am a photographer, and these photographs is a remake of what we are exposed to every day, which is advertising. So it's quite a similar pose. And uh, I, I, did, uh, I, I did work for, uh, for advertising, and the basic concept of imagery, advertising imagery, is to try to sell you a better future. 
in a future whereby if you buy that product, if you reach that destination, you will be happier. And you will be happier by means of having more friends, being more nice, being more beautiful, or being richer. If you think about uh, all the imagery that you show, if you look at, if you use this key, you, you will see that. Buy this whiskey and you will be surrounded by friends. <laughs> so that's, and th this is what at the end of the day, these, uh, these people are mimicking. And uh, although nature and uh, art and uh, um, diversity requires uh, silence uh, to be able to connect to, uh, to connect to it, to understand it. The loudness uh, of and the crowded stuff in the places does not. And so you're left uh, with uh, a dream destination that does not give you anything anymore. And what you can do is to take this uh, shot and put it on Facebook and so to act, and not uh, for one time, not to look at one of those uh, imagery, or I imagery, but to be one of those images, so your friend of Facebook will make some of those nice comments. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, I love that. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, so, how do you, how do you instead uh, uh, can enact this, uh, this spiritual process? And I think that the key word here is experience. And uh, by experience, I mean whatever you care of, whatever you love, whatever is your passion, whatever you get excited to. And uh, an, a normal way of traveling that you see in, in guidebook, you're being, uh, or uh, through a travel agent, but normally we do this to ourselves, uh, by the way that we, we, we take a, a, one of the guidebooks and we follow all the highlights. And if you arrive in Milan, you probably uh, ask, first of all, to go to see the Duomo of Milan, an example of late Gothic uh, architecture. And after that, uh, you go straight uh, into to see the Leonardo da Vinci Last Supper. So, another example of a uh, Renaissance uh, painting. And then probably you're going to, to be shown uh, what is the new building of the local government, which is an example of postmodern architecture. But you have the key to really understand the work of art in these three cases. Only if you're used to it, if you have been studying it, if you get becoming familiar with it, then you have the key to, un to understand its, its, deep meeting, its deep meaning. Otherwise, it's just a, okay, cool, what's next? And probably again with the Facebook and everybody, wow, cool. <laughs> so, who is uh, an expert, or, not, sorry, expert is not the right word, who is a passionate or has studied late Gothic architecture? So, why do you need to go and see the Duomo of Milan? Why don't instead you use your trip to Milan to have experiences and to design experiences for yourself that are linked to what you love? And let me give you an example of uh, what I love. I love cooking. I'm a, I'm a chef, but it's also my, my, my passion. And so, wherever I go, I try to have a look on the internet, what restaurants are there, and try to see what the chef in this restaurant uh, do, and normally you find someone that is interesting, creative, and I look and say, oh, that's very interesting, I would love to hear more from him. And so I just write to this person an email, and often is the info at the name of the restaurant.com. So I go in totally, totally cool, that can share my passion, the reason why I wanted that experience, and what I got is an invitation to come and spend two days working in the restaurant, or oops, with a different degree of participation. So, for example, this is me this uh, February in uh, Tel Aviv uh, with the chef and the sous chef uh, of uh, um, one of the best restaurants in Singapore, and a uh, few kilometers away from them, divided by a wall and a lot of hatred. Uh, in Ramallah, I spent uh, three days uh, in Palestine in, in, in this restaurant with these guys. And uh, again, I love cooking, but uh, this is a means to an end. Imagine spending a full day here with these people that are as much excited uh, as uh, I am to be with them. They are of being with me. And uh, we're, we're having a lot of fun. We're sharing, they are getting interesting to share. They're passionate about what they do, and they're interesting to share me their, uh, their recipes. And at the same time, they ask me to cook so, how do you make the real uh, risotto? 
And so you're treated not anymore as a tourist. You're able in this way to break down a barrier and become one of them. And also they want to take you out at night, they want to spend, they want to spend time with you. And the same things in Tel Aviv. So this is a way to, to really use uh, what I was talking about before, uh, the spiritual journey in this case of diversity, of understanding diversity through an experience, which is something that I, I love. Another thing I love doing is uh, endurance <coughs> sport. And uh, I was in January, I, I, I run, I use the history as, a, as, an, as, an, as an excuse to, to set up itineraries in a in very funky uh, zone of, uh, of the world. And, uh, and again, spending six days in, in the desert of Arabia was a very powerful way for me to meditate and running uh, in my opinion, uh, has, uh, is very similar to the mechanism of, uh, of meditations. And so it was a great way for me to get closer with the nature, to understand with nature, and to do so at a pace uh, that, uh, it's, uh, that, slow, that slow you down. But again, let me stress here, the, the key point is not in order to travel, to have real experiences you need to run in a desert. So no, that, that's just me. It can be the other experience, like cooking. So it's, the key point is about what is it that matters to you here at home. You don't need to sit down and try to take something new. Is to sit and look at yourself and what you've been doing the last week. What are the things that excite you? Uh, this is a, another example of another travel. Um, I, I cycle uh, solo from Iran back uh, to China in, uh, in September. Uh, in September last year, and I was going uh, without any planning. I was well. I, I knew which road to take, but without any planning of who, uh, where to stay at night. And I was uh, stopping at uh, these villages in the middle of nowhere. I choose a, a very, a very remote uh, road, and I entered those villages. And I was uh, trying to. There's also an art on how to ask for hospitality, but. We talk at this another time, but basically, I was approaching the, the person that I thought was more interesting, and uh, uh, going something like this. Uh, with, you know, we're using the Italian uh, gesture that always work well. I was saying, "You, me, together," and uh, uh, and <laughs> you, you need a lot of courage to do that, particularly if you're asking someone that is two meter high and has big mustache uh, and he has a grin when you ask. Uh, but. <laughs> But uh, the, um, I, I've been lucky, and these are some of the of of, of the family that have uh, that have hosted me, and it was uh, beautiful because uh, uh, one thing, the main thing I took back for the traveler the, from this travel is the hospitality that these people had, and they were excited to have me there, and they were inviting the, their neighbor and sharing the few things that they had with me. Like uh, th this family here was uh, at the top of the one of the highest passes that I crossed. It was. Uh, almost 5,000 meters, and they only had eggs. But they wanted to make a feast, so they gave me six eggs, which uh, my cholesterol level uh, suffered a little bit. But uh, everyone there shared the same en en enthusiasm. And, and ju just uh, if you're asking about this guy, he's just painting the outside of his own, but we are very high, so it's not, it's not a terrorist we, t we talk about. <laughs> but again, so cycling, the experience that I love is a means to do what here? to have really deep uh, uh, um, ex uh, cultural e exchanges or uh, serving the local culture that they travel with uh, from, a, from a close perspective. Um, so let me just uh, finish up by saying how, how do you do this? Because uh, we are very lucky that uh, I think in the last, okay, technology is uh, several years that has been uh, uh, enabling us to do interesting things. But I think in the last three or four years, there are uh, technologies empower some individual to come up with uh, um, uh, um, little businesses, a website that enable you to jump the uh, the mass industry and to really tailor down uh, your own uh, to your own uh, travel. All right. So, of course, you start with Google. I spoke already about this. Is my email for I went to Ginza. Where, where is it going? I went to to, uh, to, to Ginza and. Uh, I, I work for the for a chef uh, at the one Michelin star restaurant uh, uh, there, and this is m the email that I that, that I sent. So you just start by um, 
a simple, a simple email, but then uh, let me share with you some more exciting things that are on the net. So I'm going with, uh, with my wife and my parents, and we're going to go in Sicily in, uh, in a month's time, and this is the place I'm going to stay, which is a fantastic home, and uh, the cost is uh, less than uh, a three-star uh, three hotel. And with Airbnb, there is a, is a website uh, where people like you can put up their apartment uh, in certain time of the year for other people to rent. And in some cases, like this one is the whole apartment. In, uh, in other places, is, is just a room. But it's, uh, again, a, a great way to be inside of a person's home, which uh, I personally think that uh, they are perfect to see how people really, how people really live. Right, the, the house is not the, the setup uh, of, uh, of an hotel. Another example is uh, this site, uh, Viable. You know the saying, uh, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. And uh, basically, you can choose, uh, anyone can put up uh, um, ex travel experiences. And so, if you're here in Hong Kong, you want to take people through a tour of the local eateries, you, you can do that. And somebody in New York, see what you want to do. And uh, here, there you go. Uh, a old Rome walking tour in Rome, or a espresso or, or a fresco workshop. You, you choose what you want without being to an organized, um, going through an organized company. Or if you don't have time, we're also very busy in Hong Kong. There is Guru.com, and uh, you can employ freelancer. And you're saying, I need someone to research for me where where to go in Italy. And for eight dollars a day, you got someone in the Philippines or the, or in India. That, that you can employ and is going to give you all the opportunity that you can do. And uh, finally, more simple, like I think that the local liberal uh, um, bookshop sometimes have uh, only the opportunity to, to stock only the famous guide, but Amazon is fantastic and you find unbelievable local books. For example, I find these Jordan Walk tracks and, and caves that allow me to tell the support the travel guide that, that, that I use to uh, where I wanted to go. And this guy say, oh, wow, this place, how do you know? So very easy to research and to do that. So to, to close it down, I, I think experiences that are close to your heart allow, even in, uh, in our time, to have th that spiritual processes that the travel can el enable you to have in order to better understand yourself and feel better connected with uh, the world around you and hopefully reach happiness. Thank you.